Hafsa Tabiola, Nigeria. Musa Kua, Cambodia. Annabella de Leon, Guatemala. Inez McCormick, Northern Ireland. And tonight you're going to meet some remarkable women. It is a story of strength, integrity, and hope. These women have never given up. We were genuinely humbled, awestruck, and truly inspired by these real-time living heroines. This is storytelling in its purest and most simple form. Their stories teach us that one person can make a difference and that change is possible. I am very pleased to introduce the play Seven. Seven is a play comprised of the stories of seven women activists, real people from all over the world, and every word in the play is taken from the testimony of these seven women. I've been producing and directing Seven for six years. I read the play and it just hit me so emotionally, so strongly. And I thought this play just has to come up. My husband is beating me. He has beaten me for 26 years. Where are you? I'm in bed with broken back from him beating me. I'm doing the reading uh, of the story of uh, Marina Pisklakova Parker. She's the first woman to set up a domestic uh, violence hotline in Russia at a time when uh, nobody knew about it and it was not recognized as violence against women. When I started my work, I would speak to the police. They would say, oh, come on, women don't feel loved if they're not beaten. I was astonished. The strongest story, and perhaps the most well-known, is the one of Mukhtar Mai from Pakistan. She was gang-raped as retribution for an alleged honor crime. I am thrown onto a dirt floor, a stable. I scream for them to release me. But one man shows me his gun, and the others hold me down. She is debating whether she should kill herself or try and do something out of this very tough situation. But she actually took the rapists to the court and got them uh, sentenced. And this was uh, the first time ever in the history of Pakistan, actually. The play depicts how these women came to find their voice and also to become change makers in their own societies. Peda's concept is to bring politicians and journalists into the experience by having them become those women. I started to, to fantasize, what would it be like to put somebody with political power on stage and have that person try and identify with these marginalized women? What you're seeing is six NATO generals and one partner nation general from Sweden reading the parts of seven women in a play uh, which really explains the reality of violence to women, violence against women, and prejudice. Every part of our body has a soul. Hair, feet. But when you're raped, you lose your soul. She's just been rescued from a brothel. She's only a kid. Just by looking at her, you know that she's soulless. The tension between these seven people who actually have power to change things for real in society being witnessed by an audience. And it was hugely successful. We're sending a powerful message that from the very top of NATO, this is something that we care about and that the soldiers under our command also must take care about this. A cultural event like this uh, will have an impact. The great impact is if people start to change themselves, start to discuss these issues. I want to begin to reach to the most rural communities of Nigeria. Uh, in this play, Vladimir Pozner читает историю. Нять руку на женщину до этого никогда не. The topic that will be addressed on this occasion is closely related 
to one of the cornerstones of every democratic society, which is fundamental human rights and the protection of women's rights. We have to make sure that women's rights are recognized as human rights. That's what this play is about. I hope it will inspire change in those places where it's really desperately needed. Today, I've actually realized that theatre is very strong. This is badly needed in my country. It means really sharing stories community by community, village by village, city by city. And as long as women feel empowered, they'll do something. They won't just go home. We have had men in the audience reacting very strongly to the play. It's a privilege for me to have the opportunity to lead by example, to take a stand, to speak out. While we were on the Balkans last year, we had hundreds and thousands of people interacting uh, through Facebook and Twitter. And if we had the possibility, we could do a lot more. For me, this is the end of the beginning. The project, it's taken on a life of its own. It needs help to grow as any project or campaign would. In Cambodia, where 60% of our women don't read and write, where they beg, sell their bodies because they can't make the 50 cents a day. You talk to them about Prachitapatai, democracy. They say, take my vote and give me rights. We say, no, keep your vote. We give you rights. The way this play has taken off globally shows that it's time now, it's time for, for change. We can't wait any longer. And people say, how can you wake up? And still do this after 25 years. I say you have to do it. Until people who do not have a voice do.